Hi, everyone. Welcome to um, a GMAT MBA session on GMAT Club. So this is, we're trying to test out the YouTube Premiere function. So even though this is recorded two days back, uh, we are going to be on the live chat to answer any questions. Um, for those of you who have not uh, seen this before, I'm Shovik. I'm a second year business MBA student at the University of Michigan Ross School of Business. Um, I'm here with Sam, who is uh, also a second year student of the uh, Ross, Ross School of Business. Um, we are roommates, but right now I'm still in Ann Arbor and Sam has abandoned Ann Arbor uh, because he's really scared of getting the virus. <laughs> but soon we will be roommates again because I'm moving to Florida. Uh, uh, this is the last video that I'm going to do from Ann Arbor. So I'm a bit nostalgic because the two years are sort of over. So Sam, how are you holding up? I'm holding up pretty good. Sunny Florida. A little bit safer here than some of the other hot spots, but uh, you know, hope everybody stays safe and hope everybody's good through these times. Yeah, this, this is this is weird and strange. Um, I wanted to do a session that I've, we have been getting some getting some requests for a while now. Uh, both of us are going to uh, tech and uh, mostly tech product roles after our MBA, so I wanted to do a quick video on what to do, what not to do. A lot of people are also talking about what can they do now, now that they haven't admit to us. Round two decisions just came out last week and a lot of admits on GMAT Club are talking about what they can do today um, to actually increase their chances of getting in uh, to like any of these tech companies, right? And for which, I mean, most of my answer is like, don't do anything right now, but I remember you did a bunch. So we're gonna get through all of that. But I wanted to start off with uh, asking both of us the question around, you know, what what did we come to business school to do? What did we write in our essays? And uh, how was this period between getting in and actually landing up to business school? So I'll start with you. Yeah, so I came to business school to get into tech. Um, did a nonprofit before uh, that helped uh, underprivileged kids learn coding, think about starting tech startups, fell in love with it and wanted to do that, was shifting from a legal background. Um, so I, once I got in to Michigan in round one, I started right away networking uh, with people at the companies that I thought I wanted to explore. And then also just started following them in the news, listening to YouTube interviews, uh, reading reports about them to really start getting familiar with the industries that I wanted to potentially the segments of the tech that I wanted to be in. So. You know, just so that we are clear, do you think it's okay if I mention the companies that you were trying to get into? Yeah, go for it. So which companies? No, I'll let you do that. <laughs> which, which, which which companies did you were in your crosshairs? So I my goal my top city was Seattle. So I really keyed it on those companies. So Amazon, Microsoft, um, Zillow. Uh, but then some of the other tech companies caught my eye. Uh, Adobe, I liked a lot. Uh, Dell recruited very heavily out of Michigan, so I included them in the mix. And then also right. looked at retail companies that were heavily utilizing technology. So a Nike seemed very interesting to me, even Walmart. And so companies like that, I really, uh, you know, tried to treat all of them like my number one on like right. a limited 10 list and, you know, go heavy with networking and then also go heavy with really learning about the company. So similar, I actually wanted to come to business school to do a little bit of niche tech. I came in to do ed tech because most of my background uh, was in education and in tech. And I sort of knew that uh, tech is what I wanted to be. Uh, and I, want, I was trying to pivot from uh, very education focused tech to, to very tech focused in education, if that makes any sense. So for example, when we were, when I was working back in India with schools, I was trying to work with ed tech companies to build interventions for schools. Um, and now uh, coming into business school, I wanted to switch sides. I wanted to be in a tech company that works with different schools to build new products. So I came in with that goal. And um, to be honest, like I actually didn't know a lot about which companies come to campus and which companies recruit a lot. I had a general idea of which companies I want to recruit for, but I mean, I was, to be honest, I was ignorant and I just wanted to, yeah, I want to work for 
Google, Microsoft, Facebook, Amazon, whatever. Um, and I didn't really have a plan coming in. And I was also an international student. So I was also recruiting other stuff too, because I was, um, I was pretty sure that um, I would rather have any job that pays enough for me to pay off my loans and, pay, and live comfortably than pursue something uh, that I really, really wanted to do and uh, fail in that process. I guess I was a bit risk averse during then. So cool. So that's, that was both of us coming in. So tell me a little bit more about what you did um, after you came to school, because uh, we come in school in like, I think July, August is class yeah. start. So, and I think internship recruiting start like, you know, as early as September. So what did you do during that process? Uh, and what do you think worked well? And what do you think you could have done better? Yeah. I mean, I think uh, most people, when I got there, they would say, you know, for tech recruiting, that it happens later and that you didn't have to necessarily start going with that right away when you got to campus. But I found out that I didn't do that. And I thought that that set me ahead a bit. I mean, I kept networking with people. So the first wave was, you know, when I got into school it was in February. I used a lot of the spring and summer to touch base with contacts at these companies once. Then I used the fall for a second contact, and that was going to set up me asking them for a referral. So that was on kind of the networking side. On the application side, that 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 point, that September, October is really to kind of just polish up your resume. I mean, even though yeah. people are going to take a look at it for about 10 seconds, it's still got to look like something and get past maybe yeah. the screening. So I think September is a good chance to touch base with people a second time that you've talked to and liked and they liked you, but then also start really getting your resume done out of the way. So you don't have to, you know, you don't have to deal with that. That makes sense. I think I made those mistakes, by the way, They're exactly the ones that you're saying, because I think people, um, including me, completely underestimate how important the referrals are. Yeah. I think that was a, I think that was my major culture shock in the US as well. Because India, um, and I think a lot of Asian places too, are sort of um, meritocratic is this weird word that we like to throw around. It's not really, but the plan is that you apply and that's it. That's pretty much yeah. all you can do. In the US is totally different. And I learned that, especially in tech, it is very uncommon to get in without a referral. Even for companies that come on campus, yeah. And yep. you have like the recruitment process all laid out within your, um, you know, the recruitment center or the career development office, you still need referrals. And that was a l lesson that I wish I had known or wish I had learned before. So very similar for me, but I was actually focused in consulting recruiting a little bit at the beginning and I shifted to tech and uh, thank thankfully Sam and I were roommates. So I sort of learned some of his lessons early. And I started networking with Microsoft. Uh, I remember net, networking a lot with uh, Dell. Um, there were a few companies that really don't care if you network or not. I think Amazon is one of them, um, I, at least in the MBA recruiting process. Um, but at the same time, I felt that even though I got these referrals, that doesn't necessarily always guarantee an interview. And um, even if you do get the interview, that doesn't necessarily mean that you're going you're gonna to get the job. So uh, in all honesty, my internship recruiting, I actually faced a pretty hard time. Um, if I remember it well, I did not get an interview with Amazon. I did not get an interview for Google. I had a referral from Google, but that was from someone uh, from India. By the way, I'm sort of jumping into answering the next question, which I will ask you too. Uh, I had one interview from Microsoft, but we sort of won a case competition which sort of guaranteed an interview. And I'm not really sure that if I hadn't won that, would I get the interview? I don't really know. Um, what else? I had an interview from Apple, which I was completely lucky to get. I don't think I did much to get that interview. And um, I think that's it, man. I think those are all the interviews I had. I had shockingly few number of interviews and i was pretty pretty stressed out in that process i'm gonna get to how we prep for those interviews in a bit but tell me about you like 
what interviews did you get and what do you think led to some of that yeah um interviews interview with microsoft to the final round and then got got the internship offer um interview to the final round with dell got the offer um same with walmart um with zillow slash trulia um got to the final round made the decision before i got an answer to there um and then amazon i got an interview after i'd already accepted uh with my <laughs> um, so, I, mean, I think the key thing with with microsoft was the competition you know that was the big thing but i mean the big thing with there is we really took it seriously i mean we put our whole heart soul effort and a couple of sleepless days into that um I so, remember that. so very big success, but it you know brings back some negative memories. There's some PTSD I think, from it um, because of all the stress. Uh, with Dell, was it was networking. You know, um, they came on campus, but they had a big envoy that they sent, and they took Michigan very seriously. So I responded and kind of took them seriously. I networked with people that came to campus, people that didn't come to campus, and the same thing with Zillow. Um, Zillow was off campus. Um, you know, one of those companies that's big, but still kind of a startup and talk to people within that were there from Michigan, they kind of opened the door for me. And that really led me to be able to get the interview. So I think networking is, is the biggest thing. And then the thing is when you network, you're going to have to talk with people. And so when you come to that conversation, come with a personality, come with being able to talk with people just regularly, but also come with some knowledge of the company and having yeah. things thought about what's actually going on there a little goes a very long way uh you don't have to be an expert but just a little insights that you may even read from stratechery or some other site uh will impress a lot of people uh by the way for people who don't know stratechery there's google ben thompson he writes a lot of long form articles on current ongoings of tech from a very strategic lens uh, i would recommend that it's, it's really really good yeah. Um, yeah, I think, I think I had similar experience too. Um, uh, as, as I mentioned, the companies that I got interviews from, not a whole lot. I ended up getting into Dell um, and Apple on the tech side, and uh, I ended up going to Apple. Um, and um, I was a product management intern at Apple and had a really, really good time. I, I got into their productivity team, and we were we were working on a top secret project that I can talk to no one about, but, uh, but it was a lot of fun. And I learned a lot in that, in, uh, in that internship, which sort of brings to me my next question um, about once you get the job, um, what are some of the things that you need to do to A, um, come back to the company, get a return offer, um, and B, um, to actually you know make connections, uh, and this is your first post MBA work, um, how do you make sure that people remember you and people remember you for the good work that you've done? Yeah, I mean, I feel like I'm a broken record here, but it's like continuing, continuing to network even in that company. Um, I think I met with with Microsoft, the kind of they have a really open door policy, even almost all the way up to, you know, the executives. I know one intern was able to get a 20 minute coffee chat with um, the CMO, Chris Capicello of Microsoft over the summer. Uh, for me, I was able to talk with GMs, which are kind of like just under the corporate VP level. Um, and that was just a simply just reaching out um, and saying, I'm interested in learning about your segment and your, your team. Um, so it's just continuing to talk because at these big companies, even though you may go into one project, you may be interested in other parts. And so you're setting yourself up long term to know people. And that's really, at least at Microsoft, is the big way that people kind of move around. Yeah, no, that's that, that's true. At Apple, I sort of did that. Apple works really strangely. But um, not a lot of Michigan people at Apple, but I tried to reach out to as many people as I could. And, you know, like uh, for what it's worth, one of the people that I networked with at Apple, she ended up uh, going to a different tech company in the Bay and uh, she is still a really good friend and i con constantly ask for advice whenever i think i'm doing something uh, absolutely disastrous so <laughs> so then you come back right so you come back in the summer you come back uh, after um, like taking a fall break or whatever and then you come back and then you start net, net networking again you had a 
return offer from Microsoft. I did not have a return offer from yeah. Apple. Right. So I'm just going to underline the fact that um, I did not get a return offer from Apple um, for two reasons. I was awful. Um, no, it's actually Apple doesn't is not in the business of giving return offers to their PMs. So um, how it sort of works is they will they 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 will let you know if they have a spot in the team that you are in. Otherwise, you're on your own. Unfortunately, my team did not have a spot. But um, I think I'd like to think that I had a really good time and my boss at the summer was really happy with my work. So he sort of introduced me to a bunch of other teams and I ended up interviewing with uh, uh, another team at Apple, um, which was a really great experience, but I'm gonna come to that. So you did not really recruit a whole lot in your second year, um, but I'm still gonna ask you because I think I recruited a lot more in my second year, but tell me the difference between recruiting for a summer internship versus recruiting for full time. Yeah, I mean, I think from my perspective, it, it seemed like the opportunities tightened up for full time. Like there seemed to be a lot more opportunities for internship and then with full time, not as many spots, things get tighter. People are looking, you know, there's a little more competition because it's kind of that final chance you get an MBA. Um, but I think, and the, the deadline is a lot tighter, right? You only have maybe a yeah. one to two month window versus internship, which is, you know, you're talking, you get there in the fall and it stretches through January, February. Um, yeah, even later for a lot of yeah, companies, right? Even even later. So it's more fast paced and, you know, I think it, there could, and it's, there's gonna be more stress. You know, nerves are gonna be heightened because it is your last shot to get that job that you really like. Uh, but I think the same principles apply. Network, really prepare for the interview, and then knock out the interview when you get it. Yeah, so uh, Sam when dis decided to sign the Microsoft offer, so he didn't really do much, but I didn't have an offer, so I, I, I went in deep. And this time, though, I realized now that I had Apple on my resume, I yeah. kept getting interviews. I, uh, I was actually, I had such a first world problem. I had more interviews than free dates. So, so, that, so that was great. But at the same time, I sort of learned how difficult some of these PM interviews can be. Yep. And I think one of my most challenging interview was, uh, I think both of them, both Apple and Google, they were really, really challenging interviews. And I thought that, man, if I did get those interviews over the summer, that would have given me a little bit of a prep uh, before I went in for full time. Like to give you an example, both Apple and Google final rounds were like six parallel interviews. When I was doing things over the summer for Apple, I had I had a phone screen with the HR. I had one uh, phone round with the hiring manager, and I had another FaceTime interview, like a video interview with the director. And that's it. Oh yeah, I had a take home exercise as well, which was basically like a PM prompt, and I had to like make slides on them. But overall, it was a significantly more relaxed process. For full time, I go into the Apple office and I interviewed with Jennifer Bailey, who is the VP of um, Apple Pay. And uh, like she has been up there in like multiple WWDCs and, and I am just a MBA wannabe. So it was very unnerving. I, I felt that the pressure that you have for full time recruiting is significantly higher which I guess also comes from the fact that a company is making a much bigger bet on you. Yeah. If they choose to hire you for full time than just an internship, which is more like a trial. Uh, I also interviewed for Amazon, which was also like a four hour thing. Um, and I ended up uh, picking Amazon, which is where I'm going. So just so you know, uh, you're not gonna get rid of me. We're gonna be roommates again in Seattle, which will be fun. <laughs> um, but, but overall, I think one thing that I learned uh, is that the PM interviews in different companies, uh, I'm sad to say this, but the MBA doesn't really prep you for that. I'm, yeah. I'm not sure if you'll agree, but uh, I felt when I was doing the Google PM interview, and even for Apple and Amazon, I felt I was learning a lot of new stuff, not just tech, but also how to answer tech questions, how to look at tech casing, how to look at product design, product strategy and you know like i felt why am i not learning this in my class and it's not just me i, I reached out to other people in other business schools and 
it they felt like uh, classes not did not always set them up for success in these tech company interviews. So to come to that, you have had a fair amount of success in cracking, you know, tech interviews. What do you think are the three things that help you to prep for just the interview? Like I'm, I, I know that networking will get your foot yeah. in the door and will get you the interview. What do you think will help you actually crack the interview? It's a good question. Good question. I mean, I think that doing casing, I think, and it just circle back to what I would have done differently if I had another shot at it. Doing casing questions early and often, I think, help. They help ease the nerves right away. Uh, they make it as to where it's not that difficult. And when you see it, the more you do, it actually becomes some bit of fun, especially if you're yeah. any what interested in the industry or the product. And the other thing is, most of the time, at least in the first round too, is the interviewer allows you to kind of control it. They'll maybe ask you to describe a good product strategy or a product that you think is, you know, fit well with the market, uh, designed well, pick something that you're comfortable with, you're passionate about, but you know a lot about, especially you know the competitors. So I would say control yeah. interview and just really do it early and often. The more practice, the better you get. So by the way, Sam and I practiced cases a lot together, and especially when I was interviewing for both Google and Apple, and uh, Sam was just, um, um, you know, like happily eating away to his full-time <laughs> offer at Microsoft. We did a lot of things together. So I would love to ask you guys, people who are watching it now, uh, we will be happy to do a mock case where I give Sam a question or Sam gives me a question and we sort of attempt how we would crack this in an interview. So let me know if that's of any interest. I'm actually doing a mock consulting case with one of our friends from Ross sometime next week. So that'll be fun. I haven't done a consulting case in like forever, but I think it'll be fun to um, see how that goes. Uh, but we are go I'm, I'm going to be happy to do that. Let me know if that's going to be useful and we, we'll be happy to film something um, next week. Uh, we're almost out of time. We have eight minutes left, but I'm going to ask you one last question. Like, what's next? A lot of people quit their jobs after their MBA. Yeah. But I, th I, think, uh, I think I read some stats that don't quote, quote me on this, but about 85% people quit their jobs within a year. Yeah. Right? Um, what do you plan to do? What's your What's your thing? And I know... Uh, there could be some people from Microsoft watching this, <laughs> but I don't think so. But so let's so so, so what what yeah. do you think is the best way forward? Yeah, I'm I'm really excited about going to Microsoft, and I'm going to give at least in my mind kind of this two year window to really explore the possibilities. I mean, I'm going to the cloud marketing side, but yeah. there's still a chance to get to the PM side at Microsoft because switching switching horizontal. That's program is management, right? Yeah, program manager there, but it's the PM product management yeah. anywhere else yeah. um, in cloud or any other product. So I'm giving myself a two year window to make sure that all the great things I saw over the summer are there long term. And then to really decide, hey, do I want to be in marketing or do I want to be in product management? Um, right. But to do that, I'm going to have to keep talking to people, um, keep making friends, keep making allies. Um, do good work and, and try and get it to where you can get some uh, recognition and credibility for your first couple of projects. Um, but really keep an open mind and keep kind of exploring both in the company and out of the company, I, you know, and not be adverse to at least thinking about and entertaining other pathways, or other ideas. Yeah, I think similar. I think one thing that I would like to explore um, is um, is the mobility at Amazon. I think one thing that I keep hearing from people is that uh, people end up switching teams at Amazon like every five, six months. And I really want to, I'm looking for breadth over depth here at the beginning of my career that I sort of expose myself to as, as much as possible before I zero in on what I really want to do for a long time. Uh, but also I think one other hidden goal that I have is to be able to work outside uh, I think I've only worked in the U.S. and India, and I would like to explore working in Europe or working in Asia. And that's something that I'm exploring um, uh, within Amazon. And I know of a few people who have done that. They have a lot of they, they, they have a lot of opportunities to work outside, and uh, that also came in with really valid lessons. So 
uh, that's pretty much what I wanted to cover today, like the in and outs of doing tech and PM recruiting. Uh, just, just so everybody knows, uh, we are going to do more of these. Uh, next week, we have two GMAT sessions planned. So what I'm planning to do is take an entire uh, GMAT prep exam and from start to finish. Uh, that will be a four-hour video, but uh, I'm sort of <laughs> planning out how to do that. Uh, but it'll be fun. And the other thing that we are also looking at is doing a, a mock consulting case on YouTube and also interviewing a few people who just got admitted off of round two. Um, so thank you so much for joining. This was fun. Um, I hope everybody is working from home and staying home and washing their hands. I'll see you guys soon. Bye, everybody. Bye.